In this video, I'll show you how you can make your own multiple choice, multiple answer interaction. I got a message from Brandon. He says, hi, Paul. Thanks for all the amazing tutorials. You may have already answered a question like this. Is there a way to make an interactive knowledge check like the one in the video? And he's referring to this video here but where there are three answers that have to be checked together to be correct. For example, if there are five options and one, two, and three are correct together. Well, Brandon, that's definitely uh, something you can do here, and I think I'll take you guys through it and show you uh, my interpretation of how you could do that. Obviously, you can do this with a, a standard knowledge check, setting it up for multiple answers and so on, but if you wanna create your own interaction that's uh, truly unique, um, you know, something that's truly built from the ground up. Here's my take on how you would do that. So I've done some of the preliminary work already. This is just a standard project. Um, and I've created uh, an incorrect feedback slide as well as a correct feedback slide to uh, either reinforce the, the learning or to suggest that they maybe try again. On this slide here, this is where most of the action is going to take place. So we have a, a simple knowledge check, which of the following cities are located within Canada, and then I say check all that apply. So I've created four buttons here, one for Toronto, one for Chicago, Vancouver, and Montreal. Chicago is the distractor in this case. For the user to get this interaction correct, they're going to need to select Toronto, Vancouver, and Montreal. And then there's a submit button. So I think I'm going to actually need, and I'm kind of making this up on the fly a little bit here, I think I'm going to actually need three different types of advanced actions to do this. So the first thing I'm going to need to do, and I've already created some of this already, uh, but the first thing I need to do is probably reset this slide. Uh, in the event that someone returns to it, we want to make sure that all the variables in question are reset back to uh, a zero value. So what we're going to do is on enter, we're going to execute advanced actions, and I'm going to create a new standard advanced action. So I'll just choose standard here, and we'll call this reset reset underscore knowledge check, KC for knowledge check here. And what we're going to do is we're going to, um, it shouldn't retain the, the, the different states here, but just as a precaution, I'm going to go change the state of button Chicago to normal, change the state of button Montreal to normal, change the state of button Toronto to normal, and change the state of Vancouver to normal. I created these four buttons, and in addition to the standard rollover and down states, I created a fourth state called selected. So in the event that for whatever reason that still retains its, um, the, its current form when someone makes another attempt, uh, I want to just reset it to normal. Now there's also a variable associated with each of these buttons because we want to keep track of what's been selected and what's not. So I'm going to reset those back to zero as well. So I'm just going to choose a sign and these are variables. So I, I called them V underscore and then the name of the city selected with a literal value of zero. Assign Montreal a literal value of zero. Also zero. This seems like a lot of work, but I think it's a good example of uh, a couple of things. First of all, as you can see, I've named all my variables appropriately. I've named all my buttons appropriately. It's a good practice to get into that because later on when you have, uh, you know, four or five knowledge checks and 20 quiz questions and 
all sorts of advanced actions. You want to keep track of this stuff. So uh, it's really helpful to name things properly. So that, this is going to be my reset the knowledge check. So this happens every time the user enters this slide. So it's going to change the state of any buttons back to normal. They should be reset back to normal anyway, but just to make sure that they're aligned with, of course, this, the variables, the, the user variables we've created for each of these, uh, they'll be reset back to zero as well. So I'm going to save this as an action. We'll hit OK and close and make sure that that is run every time the user enters this slide. So I've already created the advanced actions for Toronto, Chicago, Vancouver, and last but not least, I'm going to uh, create the knowledge check advanced action for Montreal. And uh, I'll do this, and one of the easiest ways to do this is to duplicate an advanced action you've already created, especially if the bulk of it is the same. So I'm going to duplicate the Toronto one. It's called toggle underscore Toronto, but in this case, we're doing it for um, Montreal. So we'll just get rid of that in the title. And we'll call this one toggle Montreal. So it's a conditional action. So we're asking the system, or well, we're asking uh, the user variable if, in this case here, we need to change this. If the variable, and let's go down to my variables, Montreal is equal to zero. In other words, this is the normal state for Montreal. We're going to change the state of the Montreal button to selected. So it's it's going to look like it's been selected. And we're going to assign that, that variable that we created a value of, I could have left that alone, one. Otherwise, in other words, if Montreal is already selected and someone clicks it, we're going to reset it back to normal. So this will give users the ability to unselect one of their, their options. So we'll again uh, choose the Montreal button to normal and assign the Montreal variable to zero. So let's update that action. I've given it a title and uh, that's done. And again, like I said, you would do this in one for each of the buttons. I've already done that and make sure they're pointing to the right uh, advanced action. So Vancouver to Vancouver, Chicago to Chicago, Toronto to Toronto. Now what we need is, so we've got our reset advanced action. We've got our selecting the appropriate button and keeping track of it in a variable. Now we need to submit. So we're going to create an advanced action, execute advanced action, and we're going to create a new one here. And this is going to be a conditional action as well. So we're just going to create a new one, call it submit knowledge check. I'll put an underscore there, zero one. So what we're checking now is that variable. So the variable uh, for each of the cities will be either zero or one. One if it's been selected, zero if it has not. If Chicago is equal to zero and Montreal is equal to one and Toronto is equal to one and Vancouver is equal to one. Then jump to slide three right? Because slide three is the correct caption. 
anything else other than this, go to next slide. That's all you need. So, in other words, we're checking for the correct answer. If it's correct, we go to the correct slide. If it's anything else, in other words, incorrect, go to, and maybe we can be more specific here uh, because we may change this. Jump to slide and we'll say two. And let's save as action. And we'll close this here. It's important that once you've created your advanced action for submit, that you make sure that's what the button is selected for. So let's preview that again and make sure that's correct. Okay, so here we are, Toronto, Chicago, Montreal, Vancouver, submit. That's incorrect. Please try again and give it another go. Try again. This time we'll choose it correctly and hit submit. There you go. And of course, next would continue with the rest of the course. Guys, if you like the videos that I produce for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was helpful or useful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.